you'd never know that I'd just been involved in that type of accident. I went to bed feeling okay and just figured I'd probably wake up the next morning with a bit of a headache. Everything was time, time, you need to give it time. We need to have time in between scans. Try this medication and give it time until we see you again. The more people would tell me, give it time, the more frustrated I would get because nobody was living inside my head. I could never have thought then, you know, what it would become. How much time do you want me to give? How much is enough time? Because for me, I'd, I'd lost everything at this point in terms of my fitness, the love of the sport. It wasn't put on hold, it was just stopped. The accident came six weeks after the World Champs. So I sat on the M25 um, and the traffic in front of me has stopped. The next thing I know, that car just ploughed into the back of me at somewhere between 50 and 60 miles an hour. It was just like the car behind me hit a wall and I was that wall. There was no cuts and bruises. You'd never know that I'd just been involved in that type of accident. I just didn't think anything of it. I went to bed feeling okay and just figured I'd probably wake up the next morning with a bit of a headache. I remember having the conversation. I've been in a car accident. All right, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Anything where his heart rate is elevated can exacerbate the overarching symptoms. So that can be anything from dizziness, imbalance, fatigue, headaches, even down to insomnia. You know, beyond the fact that it stopped him from riding, it really affected his every day. I think we all take for granted the symptoms that you might have in isolation, but to deal with all of that all the time is, yeah, tough. Everybody that knew me well knew that I'd had a, an accident. I think that's where, um, that's where the story stopped. He was a triathlete, you know. At school, I was very heavy into running, long jump, swimming, football training at the weekends. I was always doing stuff. It became apparent that anything endurance was more suited to me. But still, there's always been a mountain bike in the garage. I mean, what kid didn't like doing skids? I've always been competitive and triathlon was absolutely no different. It was the sport to rule all sports for me. If you're a cyclist in your traffic, there's this kind of known disparity between the two groups. But he was different. It became a proper friendship. Me, Miles and, and bikes were, were entwined. We wouldn't go riding without each other. He uh, just joined a local cycling club. He said, you should come along. By the end of the ride, you're all fast friends. You know, it's just the way it works. The more I rode with these guys, the less I trained on the, the running part and the less I trained on the swimming part because I just enjoyed cycling more. Cycling became a thing I had to do at that point. Good morning from Denmark. Yeah, I mean, he was always quick. I still, to this day, draw a bit of a line at 100 miles, but he was always like, completely up for pushing beyond that. It was just my ticket to go and explore the world. Land's End to John O'Groats. Uh, it was just about a thousand miles and we did that in nine days. Uh, London to Copenhagen. I think when he set his sights on doing the World Championship stuff, that was just a, a bit of a, a step change. That was a big birthday year. I was turning 40 that year. We never really looked at it and thought, you know, it's actually the amateur World Championships. That's a pretty big deal seeing everybody in their national kit, it became real. The race started and it was, it was go. It was go like I'd never experienced go on a bike. I think there was a lot of culmination factors that meant that the result that he'd got, just not what he'd hoped to get out of it. I hope he will always look back on that and think, you know, that was a real high point and I did really well to get there. I just promised myself I'd go back and just race as hard as I could again.
a year has gone by before a neurologist firmly put a finger on a piece of paper and said there was some permanent brain damage and something that I would have to live with and something that I just, that I just couldn't fix. It wasn't a physical injury that I could see. There was nothing, so I was fighting this invisible injury which came with a million other elements of baggage. When you start looking at yourself in the mirror and you start to get frustrated with yourself because you can't go for a walk without feeling dizzy, you start to wonder whether you're going to fall over on something that you take for granted your entire life. Just everything comes into play then, your future, what you, what you look at doing, your hobbies. Is this now my life? Is this now what, what I am? I'd lost contact with the club. I didn't deal with that well. I think for a, for a long time, it became a little bit uncomfortable to talk about what we used to talk about, which was riding and adventuring and bikes. And our actual riding connection was almost completely severed for a long time. There was always an element where I was like, you know, this is such a big part of me, I'm not gonna let it, I'm not gonna let it die. And the turbo trainer is largely considered among cyclists as the way that cyclists get back to fitness. I think that level of frustration just hit absolute peak. I pulled a bike out and I, I stuck it on a turbo trainer and I figured I'm just gonna train myself back to fitness and at that time I just thought I have nothing to lose and off I went. A relatively sedate session would be you know, days of discomfort at the, at the best and at worst, like agonising headaches and insomnia. And it's rough. It was now reality that I just couldn't ride on the road anymore. For a couple of weeks, I didn't go back in that room. I didn't look at it again. Because at that point, I think I was starting to be able to just live a semi-normal day. I knew the parameters in which I would be able to kind of live and not cause myself symptoms. I knew how quickly to get out of bed, how quickly to walk up and down the stairs, just on the edge, to have a normal day without feeling bad. Anything new that I introduced to that, I would get dizzy. I could cause myself to have a headache for a day or two, just by timing my walk slightly differently. It just became, I have two options. Do I give up on cycling altogether, find something else to do that fits in this new world that I'm now facing? Or do I just not give up on it? If I can get longer than six minutes, that's an improvement, right? I sat on the bike again, and I cycled and I waited and I got dizzy and I got wobbly and I unclipped and I got off and I felt sick and my head hurt for a couple of days and then I just repeated. I just came back and I would do the same thing over and over again. And I figured as long as I wasn't getting the symptoms, as long as I wasn't getting dizzy and as long as I would get shorter manageable headaches then I could just keep on going just that little bit further just try and get a little bit further than you did last time I wasn't quite ready to just give up on that so at that stage Going out on the road was just ridiculously scary and something I wasn't even considering because dizziness was a reality of me being on the bike. So, I mean, I'd never ridden a, an e-bike before. 
So I sat down and I started to really think about what that could do for me and if there was a way that I could cycle at a similar pace that I was cycling to on a turbo trainer where I wasn't getting dizzy, keeping my symptoms manageable and then the bike was giving me the rest. And that, that was when the light bulb truly came on. Would I be all right to go out on the road? When that bike landed, it was a kind of tentative discussion of, you know, could this be an option? I've got to learn to take less power from the bike and put more of my power in. And that's only gonna happen by going out on the bike. It was a moment of clarity for me. I was like, this is an incredible tool and the power of that is just immeasurable. Some of the symptoms that were coming out, they were they were not ideal for somebody with the brain damage that I had um, and they were staying consistent so it called for the neurologist to do some further tests. It basically went something like, I'm, I'm really sorry Richard but um, you have MS, uh, you have multiple sclerosis. So somehow along this journey MS had, had taken hold and I remember just looking at him and seeing his face and thinking, he doesn't have anything else to say. Multiple sclerosis is a neurological condition that affects the spine and nervous system. There's no rhyme or reason why people get MS. Everybody's journey is very different. There's obviously a direct link with exercise and health and wellness. And the earlier you can do it, maybe you'll maintain a better condition for longer. Using something with assistance would support people getting more active. It's whatever they feel comfortable with. Richard's sort of history of being a, an endurance cyclist, that's how he is kind of set. So he wants to jump straight back on a bike and the body will soon tell you when to stop. It will make you stop, you know, whether you want to or not. So for Richard being on the bike, that's how he's learnt about his tolerance levels. You know, it's having that positive attitude and having a go and sort of pushing yourself to do as much as you can do within your limitations. I think that is the key. So I wake up in the morning and I just move my shoulders and I wiggle my toes and my hands and just make sure I can feel everything. And every day I go to bed, it's a complete reset. E-bike is a gift, so I need to treat it as such. And it's the only reason I'm riding out on the road. The short-term dream would just be to call up the guys that I used to ride with every Sunday and just say, how do you fancy like wasting an hour on a bike with me? I think there's a couple of guys that would be happy to have that telephone call. He texted me and said um, that uh, I'm thinking about going out for a ride. Would you mind coming with me? I might, have even, I might have even sobbed. I've not worn my club kit for two years and that will be a nice day. That will be a nice day to put my kit on, ride down to the meeting point and just go for a ride again on a Sunday morning. freedom that he'd lost and for me didn't really realize how much I missed that. If you're strong-willed enough, if you're determined enough, you can achieve it. That's all I wanted to do is just go for a ride. I just know that if I can wake up and do what I want to do in that day or go for a ride in that day, I will and that's, that's all I've got.